Hello and welcome back to Planescape Torment Enhanced Edition with me, Barden, the nameless one, Mort, and Eb Creekney's here. So we were in the middle of talking to Eb last time, but um, we kind of ran out of time, so um, I've reloaded the game up and we're going to chat with him a little bit more. Okay, so I had some other questions about Sigil. Tell me of the Davos. Aye, those funny floating bloods that speak in symbols, Eb laughs. Quite a piece of work, eh? The Davos are kind of the ladies janitors and workmen, doing exactly what she wants. Make sure Sigil's running up to snuff, patching walls, tearing down buildings, building new ones, setting up portals, seeing off others, and on and on. They're a pretty neutral faring bunch, and you don't want to interfere with one or kill one, or you'll bring the lady's wrath down on you, you right quick. Okay, I had some other questions about Sigil. Tell me of Sigil's time. The way we measure time in Sigil's by the brightness of the sky. See, we haven't got a sun and moon like most worlds. We got this everlasting haze that brightens and darkens at regular cycles. What most folks call midnight, we call anti-peak. What they call noon, we call peak. See, it's based on the peak and anti-peak of the brightness. So when someone says something about five hours past peak, that's what they mean. I had some other questions about Sigil. Tell me of the city's layout. Phew. Let me wet my tongue. He takes a pull from his tankard. The city floats above an, inf an infinitely tall spire. The spire. It lies on its side like a discarded wagon wheel. But there's no spokes that connect it to the spire. It's divided into six wards, each of them with its own function. Right now, you're in the hive. I think the purpose of the hive is to be squalor to the rest of the city's grandeur. <laughs> Factions, philosophical clubs, or gangs if you prefer, divide up the running of the city between them. Okay, let's see what else we got. Were you in a faction? Eb raises his hand as if to stop you and laughs like... <laughs> oh now, hold on lad. It's no has-been, I'm no has-been faction member. They say and they're right, that once you're one of the Harmonium, you're a hom Harmonium for life. We're the bloods that try and make sure Sigil stays out of trouble. No rock in the spire. No folks getting too over-enthusiastic about hurting each other. Keeping the city down to a low roar. We try and keep the peace, lad. And most times, we do a decent job. I had some other questions about Sigil. Tell me of keys and portals. Sigil's called the City of Doors for a reason, lad. There's portals everywhere. Portals are, well, like doors that lead across the multiverse. Except they don't look like doors. Instead, they can be any bounded space. Window, door, pothole, picture frame, barrel hoop, the space inside scaffolding, a wardrobe, each could be a portal. Waiting for just the right key to open it and take you someplace in the multiverse. Now keys, go on. Aye, each portal has a key, you need to open it. Now, while portals can be any bounded space, keys have more variety. They can be anything from a little tune you hum when next to the portal, to dancing a jig, to being in the right mood, to having a piece of the place you want to go on your hand, and on and on. In my youth, I once convinced a girl that kissing a man beside it could open a portal to Arcadia. Turns out I was right. How many trips to Arcadia did we have? Many portals probably have never been found. There's some you can uncover just by asking people and getting the right key. Finding out the dark of a portal is the 
Hang on. Find my place again. Finding out the dark of a portal is the toughest part. But I warn you, lad. Portal hopping shouldn't be a pastime for a fella in your way. Nor should you be wandering sigil after dark. Neither. You'd be... You'd do best to stick to the main ways and open peak and watch yourself. So I think that's referring to the fact that we're um, pretty low level and also uh, probably at the um, nameless one is pretty crap at uh, melee as well. I had some other questions. What other places can you recommend? Well, Ebb puffs on his pipe and studies you. This is perhaps the best kip you could have wandered into from the start. Judging by your tattoos, you might be partial to having designs on your body. In which case, there's a tattoo salon a little spineward from here. You want to stay away from the Alley of Dangerous Angels if you can. We found that out uh, firsthand a lot. Ignis torched that place not long ago, and ever since, a bunch of bad bloods have set up their kip in that stretch of desert. I had some other questions. Actually, no, I don't. Okay, so nothing, I suppose. Farewell. Okay, then we've got. So we've got this guy here, Candrian, but he's kind of only half here, which is a bit weird. You see a soft looking man with gentle, far staring eyes. He dresses in supple leather clothing and carries various implements of use and destruction about his body, such as ropes, spikes, tinder boxes, and empty bottles of air. He looks half gone, literally. There's an ins insubstantiality. Oh, sorry. There's an insubstantiality to his existence, as if his exist essence has been partially leached away. He focuses those eyes on you. And suddenly you find them gripping and determined. Greetings. Greetings to you, O Seeker. Greetings. He carefully sets down the mug he's holding and gives you his attention. I've seen the far reaches of the multiverse and returned to tell the tale. I've walked upon the bodies of dead gods and spun moonbeams in the astral ahead of a thousand shrieking Jit Yankee knights. Geet Yankee? Geet Yankee? I don't know how you pronounce that one. I've passed the edges of existence and watched my essence shiver away before me. What is it I can do for you? I have some questions for you. Perhaps I have answer for you. Speak and I shall tell you. Who are you? I am Candrian Ilborn. Traveller, dreamer, tale spinner and so forth. You're a traveller? Tell me of the planes. I am tired, Seeker, so tired. I am fresh back from negotiation. I will answer what I can for you, but I cannot promise that you will find satisfaction in the answers I give. What would you know? Would you hear of the outer planes, the prime material, or the inner planes? What's the difference? The difference is, true essence Seeker, the inner planes are matter, substance, true physicality. They are the building blocks of the multiverse, for it is from them that all belief in the elements springs. The inner planes filter through the ethereal plane, the plane of potential, some say, which forms the elements into the world of mortals. Once past the ethereal plane, one reaches the prime material, where exist all manner of mortals and monsters and myths and machines. It is there that belief is born and there that the spirits that create the outer planes are born. When mortals die, they pass through the astral plane, a no place that is thought and mental energy itself. It is in all things and in none. It is paradox, among other things, and it filters spirits into the great ring. Do you comprehend so far? Yes, go on. Now, 
The outer planes, where shall I start? Do you know the cardinal rules of the planes on which all others are based? Do you know about the composition of the outer planes? Do you know of the great ring and its divisions into our hearts? Do you know of the individual planes? Each of these leads to the next, and so it is best to start from the beginning. Tell me of the composition of the planes. The outer planes are created of and by belief and thought and faith. They take their imagined form from the prime material plane, shaped into forms that stagger the imagination, built by the accumulation of belief. Belief creates the planes. Belief has power here. Change belief and you can change the nature of reality. The creatures that are born here, the plane born, like the fiends and the celestials, are truly born of the thoughts and concepts of mortals. They each express some sort of ideal, and the more powerful the ideal, the more powerful the being. Thus, the being that symbolizes love is one of the strongest of all. Go on. That's why the powers, gods some call them, live out there. This is where all the fate is in them comes. This is where they are at their most pure and most strong. Their realms are extensions of their very being, manifestations of their godly essence, all of it informed by belief. So the composition of the planes is belief. Tell me of the great ring now. Among the leaves unity of planeswalker, we conceive of infinite outer planes as a ring of surrounding the plane of ultimate neutrality, the Outlands. The spire atop which Sigil sits is in the centre of the Outlands. The further one travels away from the spire, the less neutral the planes grow, until it spills into the neighbouring planes. Each of these planes impinges on the Outlands, spinning themselves into law and chaos, good and evil. The Great Road marks the demarcation between the Outlands and the gate towns spring up around the gates to these plains. Beyond the gate towns lies the hinterlands, uncharted territory that is lost to history, that lo loses thought. Danger lies in the hinterlands. So we definitely shouldn't be going there anytime soon. Go on. The outer planes differ by morality, not substance. For you, we'll divide the planes into three sets, the upper planes of good, the lower planes of evil, and the boundary planes of neutrality. These are then divided, into further, divided further by law and chaos, with the outlands in the middle. Which of these interests you? So I think we're going to be playing a good character, so I guess the upper planes we'll start with. Of the upper planes, there are the neutral planes, the lawful planes, and the chaotic planes. What would you know? The neutral planes. The neutral upper planes contain the beast lands, a place of neutrality and goodness, with a slight tinge of chaos, where the animals rule in the eternal noon and night. They hold by topia, by topia twin paradise of industry and labor where all work towards the good of all and Elysium, the sweetest plane of goodness and calm I have ever come across. Alas, right now I am not well enough to enjoy any of their restorative effects. What would you hear of now? Tell me the rest of the upper planes. Okay, let's do the lawful planes next. Carding gives a small shudder. I'm not the best person to speak of the planes of law he says, for the innate structure and ultimate patterns they impose frighten me. I steer clear of them because I value my individuality more than I value the knowledge they'll bring me. They include regimented Arcadia, nearest of the good planes to the unbending order of Mechanus, and Mount Celestia, home of the Archons, an island in the Silver Sea. Tell me of the rest of the upper planes. The chaotic planes. These are where I feel at home. 
though I steer clear of Isgard for the most part. The endless battles and tests of metal among the floating Erkbergs of the plain don't do much for my disposition. Aborea though, hmm. the mountains are taller, the air clearer, the rivers purer and the game larger than anywhere else. It is a true paradise, a place where passions run high and the wine never ceases to flow. When I have recovered enough of my wits and myself, when we have done with the outer plains, you should ask me of the inner and I will describe my journey to you. I will return to Aborea's bowers and glades and lose myself for a time. Okay, so tell me more of the upper plains. Let's see what else we've got. Let's go back a few steps to overview. Tell me more of the plains in general. Of the plains of the Great Plain. Okay, I had some other questions. Oh, I think we lost. Perhaps I have answers for you. Okay. Who are you? Tell me of the planes. Okay. Uh, tell me of the inner planes. He sighs as if this reminded him of his bone deep weariness. <sighs> think of the inner planes as a globe. On the top pole, you have the positive material plane. On the bottom you have the negative material. He pauses. Remind me to tell you of the negative. His eyes turn inward to some private horror. From the interaction between the two springs all of the urge for existence and non-existence, death and life, actuality and nothing. From them spring the basic elements, plane, elemental planes, like fire, water, air and earth. The para-elemental planes that lie between the four basic elements and the quasi-elemental planes that come from the interaction of the four elements with the positive and negative. Tell me more of the negative material plane. His eyes cloud over. I went to the inner planes to discover my true essence. I made this mistake I made the mistake of visiting the negative material plane in order to understand my body's urge to decay and the cycle of death in life. I thought myself protected against the ill effects of the plane with my magic, but I was wrong. The blackness of infinite nothing pressed on my soul and I was beset by shadows that sought to snuff out my very soul. I lost my way for time, for an eternity, and nearly lost my existence. I could feel my essence falling away from me, and even now, half gone, never will I return. How did you survive? Dated my journal. How did I survive? He smiles tightly, with a piece of nothing that held back the nothing. Nothing can stop nothing, you know. And so I carried nothing in my hand to protect me. Do you plan to journey to the ultimate negative yourself? You have the smell of desperation about you, and so I make you this gift. Pull it in your hand, and when the shadows press in, it should protect you and your friends somewhat, should they remain close to you. <laughs> he passes you a small black token that looks as if it has no uh, dimensionality to it at all. Thanks. Tell me more of the planes. Tell me of the prime material. You want to know of the prime material? Visit it. The boundless worlds of that plane have an infinite variety, as do the planes, but I cannot encapsulate them as I have here. Suffice to say that they are the birth of the outer planes, the children of the inner, and they hold limitless potential within their boundaries. Okay, tell me more of the planes. What did you mean when you mentioned negation before? I said negation, not negotiation. Okay. His eyes cloud over. I went to the inner planes to discover my true essence. I made the mistake of visiting the negative material plane in order to understand my body's urge to decay and the cycle of death. Oh, we've already heard this. 
Okay, um, tell me of the other planes. Okay, I think we've gone through all of the things that are planes. What are you doing? I, I'm fresh back from negation and I'm trying to restore my essence before it slips away from me altogether. I see, I had some other questions. What is this place? Unless the cosmos has shifted or we have been spun into the mazes, I would say that we're in the Smoldering Corpse Tavern. What can you tell me of the patrons here? I mind my own business here, Seeker, for I spend too much time away not minding it. Speaking to the bartend, speak to the bartender if you would learn more of his customers. I had some other questions. I'm looking for a journal I lost. I've seen no journal lately but my own. And that has crumpled away into nothingness. My apologies. No matter, I had some other questions. Do you know a collector named Farod? Farod grew up to be a collector. How long ago was this? When I said that last, he was but an officious stripling in one of the upper wards. Ha! <laughs> Time does change some people. No. Seeker, I don't know Farod anymore. I'm willing to bet. I think that's just done with him. So I say very well, f farewell. But he seems to know a lot about the planes and that kind of thing. So it's interesting. Now, um, who have we got then? Dakon. Let's speak to Dakon. The man before you is old. His dry yellow skin has the scars of one who has travelled everywhere and never rested long in any one place. His pinched face is inhumanly angular and his ears sweep out from his skull. Tapering to points, he wears a loose-fitting orange tunic and a strange shimmering blade is strapped across his back. The blade looks to be two-pronged glaive, made of some metal whose surface whirls like a film of oil on a pond. Greetings! The man turns to you, his eyes like polished coal, he stares through you and for a moment you wonder if he might be blind. The weapon suddenly turns a dead flat black, mirroring the man's eyes. Are you alright? Hail, traveller. He says nothing for a moment, merely searches your face with his eyes. So we've already heard him say, hail traveller. I guess he must be like a special character if he's got a voice. His voice is quiet and somber, like a wind whispering through the branches of a great tree. Hail! Your eyes are the weight of one who has traveled far to be in this place. You could say that. I guess he's finished speaking now, okay. The man's gaze doesn't waver from, from yours. I am known as Dakon. The emphasis he places on the word known strikes you as odd, yet familiar at the same time. You are not known to me. I do not know myself. That is for the best. In knowing yourself, there would be little in the planes left worth knowing. He falls silent for a moment, still studying you with his coal black eyes. I would know why you have come to this city. I am looking for answers. I have many questions. Speak your questions. I will hear. Your features are unfamiliar to me. What are you? Agitzerai. Agitzerai? Agitzerai is one of the people. One of the people? Agitzerai. Yes, but what are the Agitzerai exactly? Dakon is silent for a moment and speaks. Our history does not need to be made known to you. We would bleed to death on time's blade before I recited a fraction of the histories of our people. I don't need to know your histories, but I would know of your people as they are now. That kind of silent for a moment. No, uh, sorry, no this and accept it as an answer. We are the people who make our homes upon the shifting plane of limbo. With a deft motion, Dakon slips the blade from his back and holds it before you. Let's wait and see what happens. There we mold the matter of limbo with our minds. We forge cities with our thoughts. 
As you watch, a series of rippling waves of metal begin to roll forth from the centre of the blade. The pitch and crest of the waves match the inflection in Dakon's voice. In its chaos we dwell, with only our knowing to preserve us. We are the Gitzari. What is that blade you have? It moves, shifted in response to your voice. It is a Karach blade. It is an object that lets others know the rank of the wielder. Karach, what does that mean? Dakon falls silent for a moment, as if searching for the correct word. In your tongue, the closest translation is chaos matter. The people may shape it with their thoughts. Shape it with their thoughts? Karach is not shaped by heat, but by knowing oneself. It is a mirror that reflects the will of the wielder on its surface and in its edge. When one knows themselves, the blade is strong, harder and stronger than steel. When one does not know themselves, the blade is as water, formless and weak. Are you willing to sell it? It will become as nothing in your hand in the hands of another. The blade knows my mind and I know its heart. We die the same death. I had some other questions. Okay, let's see. Can you tell me about this city? It is known by the name Sigil. Among the people it is known as the city that does not know itself. It doesn't know itself? What do you mean? The city exists, but it does not know itself. In not knowing itself, its existence is flawed. How is it flawed? The city exists in opposition to itself. It has set itself apart from the plains, yet it seeks to be everywhere at once. Its walls are doors, yet it keeps those doors locked. Such an existence tells of a thing that does not know itself, and in not knowing itself, it is flawed. When you say the city is everywhere at once, what do you mean? The city itself is built from doors. These doors lead everywhere. Okay, where are these doors? They are everywhere. That can fall silent for a moment. It is said that every bounded space within the city is a door that leads elsewhere. I see, I had some other questions. You seem to place a special emphasis on knowing. What do you mean? All things, whether structure or flesh, their existence is defined by knowing of themselves. And then if a man does not know himself? When a mind does not know itself, it is flawed. When a mind is flawed, the man is flawed. When a man is flawed, that which he touches is flawed. That composes. It is said that what a flawed man sees, his hands make broken. Do you know yourself? That falls silent. His coal black eyes take on the same distance that you noticed when you first spoke. I ask again, do you know yourself? When Dakon speaks again, his voice has changed. His words echo like a great stone dropped into a chasm. It looks like he is forcing the words from his chest. It is not my will that you know this. Never mind, I had some other questions. We won't force the issue. Do you know of a man named Farad? I am told he knows something about me. That one is not known to me. I had some other questions. I've lost a journal. Do you know where it might be? The location of such a thing is not known to me. Okay, well I guess we're done with that gun then. There is nothing to be said. Farewell. As you turn to leave, the man speaks sharply. The first time you have heard his tone change since the conversation began. Hold! The man's voice levels out. This city is not known to you. I would travel your path with you. Okay, so ah, I guess he's like an extra party member. Okay, so we could either say accept or you're all. I think, yeah, we've only got uh, two of us, so I accept. An extra blade would be welcome. Your path is mine. Strange enough, his voice seems distant, and it echoes as if he was speaking from across a great distance. Very well, let's go. 
Okay, so um, we got, wow, 1,000 experience, that's nice. And we've also got another party member, okay? So we're almost done, I think, for this episode and done for the smoldering corpse bar or tavern. But um, we still got O to, to talk to, so let's talk to O here. You see a man standing stock still. He isn't moving a muscle. On closer examination, it appears that he isn't even breathing, just standing. His eye sockets are empty holes in his face. Contained within their bounds is a flat grey light that seems to dance with possibility. Looking into the sockets, the eerie empty feeling of a limitless void shivers through you, as if you have gazed into a sliver of eternity. The head slowly swivers towards you. You notice that no muscle appeared to move under his skin as he turns, and he speaks in a pure, bell-like tone. Well met, Wanderer. You have forgotten again, haven't you? Do you know me, stranger? As he opens his mouth, you get mouth, you get the feeling of eternity again. Inside his mouth, you see no tongue, no teeth. It, it's almost as if this man were a shell surrounding an illimitable expanse. I have spoken with you before, and always you forget. Your endless quest to discover yourself ends always in your amnesia. You draw close to the truth and recoil. Let us hope that you have the strength to endure your existence. What do you know of me? How do you know this? I know that you, like a fly, rise up from the wreckage of your old shell, buzz about for a time, curl up and die at the window of truth. You bubble about the pain, seeking the light without any plan to your actions and fall exhausted when you fail. You light on others to feed from them for a time and move on with no regard to them. I have watched you come here and listen to your words and watched you move away no wiser. Will you learn from your mistakes, Seeker? Who are you? I am O. For some reason, when he speaks his name, it sounds like he's speaking a much more than a single letter as if the speaking of his name contains untold possibilities and nuances. No human tongue could ever create such a sound. What sort of name is that? It is my name. It is the name of a portion of eternity. I am a letter in the divine alphabet. Understanding me leads to understanding existence. I am written the true names of half of everything. My being encompasses truth. I am mathematic, organic, metaphysic. So we won't call him crazy. So what does that mean? The divine alphabet is written in the name of everything that exists, from the seed at the heart of the elemental planes to the core of the great beyond. My brother or sisters, a single word translate into the two in your mind, and I reach across all this that is, was or ever shall be, we are thought and reality and concept and the unimaginable. Tell me about the great beyond. You would not understand. No mortal possibly could. If it is beyond the powers of comprehension of all but the most powerful of powers. And once they understand, they move beyond the veil of mortal comprehension. I can explain it no more than that. Perhaps sometimes you will understand. Perhaps sometime you will understand. So what are you doing here? Why, I'm watching the ebb and flow of mortality. And what do you see? You mortals are like wasps. You build lives, nests from the slimmest of branches, and when the wind shakes your home life free, you seek to sting the wind to death. Instead of realizing your foolish mistakes, attempting to repair the damage you have caused yourselves and learning from your experience, you bring harm to any who have the misfortune to blunder near you in your time of pain and distress. My advice to you and to all mortals, Stop acting like an insect and start acting sentient. I'll think about that. In, in the meantime, answer some more questions for me. I'm looking for a journal. It's urgent. Do you know where I might find it? I know where you can find it, but it's not my place to reveal such information. Rest assured you will find it, and as well as the man you seek. Do you know where Farrell is? I know where he is. I can give you only one word, nearby. 
You will find him in the hive, under a veil of secrecy. Then at best, go look for him. Farewell. Okay, so we're done with all, and um, we're also done with this particular episode. So from myself, O, Dakon, the Nameless One, and Mort, it's goodbye, and we really do hope to see all of you next time.